On April 1, 2009, Jiro Nozomi created a new travel agency, Adventure Travel. The following transactions occurred during the company's first month. And we see it looks like there was uh, about 10 different transactions. And down at the, at the bottom of the screen, we're provided with the company's chart of accounts. At the very bottom, we see the first requirement, which is to prepare journal entries to record the transactions for April and post them to the ledger accounts. The company records prepaid and, under, and unearned items in balance sheet accounts. On April 1st, Nozomi invested 39,000 cash in computer equipment worth 40,000 in the company. And we see that transaction on the screen now. An, a debit to cash, a debit to equipment for the dollar amounts given, and a credit to J. Nozomi Capital is how we would book the April 1st transaction. Then on April 2nd, the company rented, rented furnished office space by paying 2400 cash for the first month's rent. So we debit rent expense and we credit cash. On April 3rd, the company purchased 1900 of office supplies for cash. So we debit office supplies for 1900 and credit cash. On the 10th, the company paid 2700 cash for the premium on a 12-month insurance policy. On this one, we would debit prepaid insurance for $2,700 and credit cash for the same amount. They tell us coverage begins on April 11th. On the 14th, the company paid $1,000 cash for two weeks salaries earned by employees. So we'll debit salaries expense for $1,000 and credit cash as well. On April 24th, the company collected 12,000 cash on commissions for airlines on tickets obtained for customers. So here we increase cash with a debit and record revenues by using the account commissioned earned for $12,000. Then on the 28th, the company paid another thousand for another two week salaries earned by employees. So we debit salaries expense and credit cash for a thousand. And on the 29th, the company paid $350 for minor, minor repairs to the company's computer. So we'll debit repairs expense and credit cash. Then on the 30th, we have the last two transactions. The company paid $1,000 cash for the month's telephone bill. Debit telephone expense for $1,000 and credit cash. Also on the 30th, the owner withdrew $2,500 cash from the company for personal use. So in this case, we debit the, with the drawing account, J. Nozomi withdrawals, for $2,500 and credit cash as well. Next, we tackle Requirement 3, which asks us to prepare an unadjusted trial balance as of April 30th. And you see on the screen the unadjusted trial balance. And there's notes next to the accounts that show which transactions created the dollar amounts. So for cash, we had transactions throughout the month. And you can see how we computed the balance. For instance, we started off with the 39000 cash investment. And then there were a number of payments that reduced cash. We also have the 12,000 commissions earned from uh, providing airline tickets, increasing cash, and then other transactions that used cash as well. On office supplies, the 1,900 came from the April 3rd transaction. Uh, moving down to salaries expense, we had two separate transactions on April 14th and 28th. So all in all, this, uh, this screenshot that you see here shows the unadjusted trial balance, it shows we're in balance, and tells us which transactions were used to derive those balances. On requirement four, we're asked to use the information provided in letters A through E to compute um, adjusting entries for the month. So on A, two-thirds of one month's insurance coverage has expired. So we need to calculate two-thirds of the monthly amount of insurance. It comes to $150 and debit insurance expense and credit prepaid insurance to show that the prepaid insurance, you know, what we previously booked as prepaid insurance, had, has expired for the month. On B, $800 of office supplies are still available. So we need to take what we had in office supplies and reduce it by an amount so that only $800 of office supplies remains.
Then on C, we had uh, this month's depreciation on the computer equipment was four hundred dollars. So we need to record a, an increase to depreciation expense and a credit to accumulated depreciation. On D, the employees earned $540 of unpaid and unrecorded salaries as of month end. We need to accrue that. So we debit salaries expense for the $540 and credit salaries payable. And then finally on transaction E, the company earned $2,200 of commissions that weren't billed. So we we use the account accounts receivable to show amounts owed to the company by its customers and we credit commissions earned which is a revenue account both in the amount of twenty two hundred dollars requirement five asks us to prepare the income statement and the statement of owners equity for the month of april and the balance sheet as of april thirtieth two thousand nine and this is the normal cycle we would prepare income statements after we've made adjusting entries now on the screen you see the income statement and you also see some notes next to every account that shows where the balances came from. So in the case of commissioned earns we had $12,000 that we already had determined was the pro proper amount on the adjusted trial balance and then we had another $2,200 adjusting entry that also credited commission earns. So as a result we have an increase and a total of $14,200 shows on the income statement. And you can go through the other expense items as well to see where those amounts came from. The next step in the accounting cycle after preparing the income statement would be to prepare the statement of owner's equity. And the reason why this comes next is we need to use net income on the statement of owner's equity and we, we get net income from the income statement. So we start off with beginning capital which was zero we add in any owner investments there was seventy nine thousand then we drop in net income that we computed just a minute ago and we subtract out withdrawals to come up with the ending capital amount in this case it's eighty two thousand seven hundred and sixty dollars and we'll use that amount to show it on the balance sheet as of april thirtieth two thousand and nine after the statement of owners equity we prepare the balance sheet and here we list the account balances that we had put together starting with the unadjusted trial balance and then um, including items that appeared on the adjusting entry and we also consider the capital the ending capital account that we calculated on the statement of owners equity so you see that this is the, the logical next step in how we prepare the information and we have to follow the accounting cycle so that we have the information needed to prepare the next statement and in this case it's the balance sheet. Once we've prepared all the financial statements for the period we prepare journal entries to close the temporary accounts and pose these entries to the ledger. Temporary accounts by and large are the accounts that appear on the income statement and there's usually four um, closing entries to make. First we close revenues to income summary. Since revenues normally have a credit balance we take the total dollar amount that appeared in the revenues account in this case we only have one commissioned earns and we debit it and as a result commissioned earns will earned excuse me will now have a zero balance and we transfer that to another temporary account called the income summary account. Next, using a compound entry, which means we have more than just a single and a debit account on the entry, we close all of the expense accounts to income summary. Since expenses normally have a debit balance, closing them involves determining the balance of every account and crediting it, therefore bringing their balance to zero after we've made that entry and posted it to the general ledger account. So on the second entry you see a number of credits to expense accounts with the offset going to income summary and of course the offset is equal to the total amount of the credits therefore our debits always equal our credits. Finally we look at the third entry and the third entry we close income summary to the capital account. So we've only used income summary just to close off revenues and expenses and finally we close it and we do that by debiting income summary for whatever that balance would be and in this case 
it's got a 14,200 credit balance less a 7,940 debit balance, which leaves us with a $6,260 debit balance. Uh, excuse me, credit balance. So closing it, we debit it for 6,260, driving the income summary to a zero balance, and the offset goes as a credit to the owner's capital account. Now, in case you're wondering, well, couldn't we have just closed the revenue and expense accounts directly to the owner's capital account? You could do that, but that's just not customarily uh, done. Now, with today's modern computer systems, uh, this whole idea of a closing process and income summary um, uh, may not even work this way. Um, but with a manual accounting system, which is a good way to learn accounting, this is the approach we use. An income summary is, is commonly used as a step in the closing process. Then the last entry would be to close the withdrawals. Now, withdrawals doesn't flow through to the income summary account because withdrawals are considered to be distributions of the company's assets. They're not a component of income, right? It's not an expense. It's a distribution of the company's assets. So withdrawals normally have a debit account, so we close it with a credit, and the offset is a debit reducing the owner's capital account. And the last step in applying the accounting cycle would be to prepare a post-closing trial balance. And a post-closing trial balance simply lists the accounts we have in the general ledger after we've closed the books, or, or let me go in the right order, after we've made adjusting entries, after we've made financial statements, after we've, we've uh, made closing entries, and what we have left. So what's left are the accounts um, that exist with dollar amounts, and they'll all be balance sheet accounts. There'll be no temporary accounts on the income statement because we've closed it out. And if we've done everything correctly, the debits will equal the credits. And in this example, you see that that is the case.